now tuned in to the Storm Tracker Podcast. Welcome back to the Storm Tracker Podcast. I'm Marcus Benjamin here representing for CanesCounty.com, part of the Rivals.com network. Make sure you subscribe to the website, CanesCounty.com, for free until spring. We're running a promo for the weekend. Use the promo code Canes24, offer valid until Monday. Today, I've got Greg Smith, National Recruiting Analyst. Uh, newly promoted, I just want to say <laughs> congratulations, my guy. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, to to the position, of course, he covers the Midwest for Rivals.com. And Rivals released its final 2024 rankings, and the Miami signees made some noise here, Greg. So wanted to have you discuss the movement in the rankings. And first, just, you know, Marquise Lightfoot uh, jumps into the five-star uh, class, I guess you could say, man. Yep. Um, he had an outstanding All-American Bowl. Um, you know, you were in the room uh, to kind of discuss his production. What was the discussion like, and why did he make that jump to being a five-star? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting, and, and thank you for having me back on, man. It's always good to be with you. Um, he was one that – you know, there wasn't it wasn't like there was a lot of debate because of the fact that he had the kind of the perfect storm where so he was in San Antonio for the All-American Bowl. Um, I was down there. Our, our director of recruiting, Adam Gorney, was down there and our um, rankings director, Adam Friedman, was down there. Right. And so we basically had the me, the Midwest guy, and then the two guys that also swing big hammers in those rankings meetings to see him. And he completely dominated all week. So because of that, when we got time to actually make him a five star it was just like oh yeah this is gonna happen because he was so good in that week and it wasn't just that you know i think he had a sack a sack and a half and a, and a couple pressures in the actual game but it wasn't just that during the week he was unblockable and i've made the joke that some of those offensive linemen on the other team had to have nightmares about him um because he was just running around them all week the thing that really stands out about lightfoot in his play is that he's got such a quick first step off of the line, right? He's so fast um, to, to get around the edge. Um, as you can see in the, in the video clip that's up there, if you look at his arms and look at how long his arms are, he also, you know, can just extend and get on guys and, and kind of shuck them away really easily too. He's got a good spin move as well. Like I think that once he continues to, you know, refine his game, he gets stronger in the college weight room down in Miami. He's going to be a nightmare for people to deal with like he, he's a fantastic prospect yeah can't wait for him to you know be under the tutelage of, of a jason taylor too you know mm -hmm. just 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 to learn from a jason taylor i mean they have very similar build and have a very similar um uh, motor as well the, yeah. i mean i watched jason taylor you know you know, for his entire career as a Miami Dolphin. And uh, the one thing that I could say about him is that he had a relentless motor. He never stopped his pursuit of the quarterback. And that's kind of what I saw from Lightfoot as well during the All-American Bowl. But besides him, um, Booker Pickett also had an outstanding uh, couple of All-Star games. I mean, he yep. was – at the UA All-American game and at the Polynesian Bowl. And he just kind of jumped off the screen for me. Um, and he made it into the top 100 with his performance. So what, what was the conversation like about Booker Pickett? Yeah, he's another another kind of long, lean pass rush specialist, right? He's and he's had a, he had a ton of production in high school, and this is where it, it's a little different with him, where you sometimes don't know. Where sometimes in these rankings calls, like guys have a like huge amount of production. I think it was thirty sacks just as a junior that Pickett had, and then has a good senior season, and you just don't know when you want to see him in person. So the guys see him down in 
Orlando. Um, and John Garcia was down there and Friedman and Gorney were down there as well. And you see him in person and he does the same stuff that he was doing on high school Friday nights. Um, he does down in Orlando. Then he goes to Polynesian Bowl and also performs well out there. Um, he's a, a, just another really good pass rusher. And it's funny, and we were kind of joking about this before we got on, is that it feels like Booker Pickett is like the other guy in this group um, of defensive linemen and pass rushers that Miami has coming in, which is just kind of insane because in most other classes around the country, he'd be like the gem of the defensive class. Uh, but Miami right. has done such a good job of putting this group together um, that he might he's the fourth guy on that defensive line. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really outstanding the defensive line class that Miami's kind of put together uh, with a Booker Pickett, with an Elias Rudolph, with an Artavius Jones, with a Justin Scott, Armando Blunt. I feel like I might be forgetting somebody. Cole McConathy is another one on that defensive line. Just an outstanding group, top to bottom. First, I, I want to get your opinion on the defensive line. Is it the best in the country is what Miami Hurricanes fans want to know. <laughs> and just, you know, overall of just kind of, you know, watching recruiting over the years, how does this D-line compare to historic D-lines? Yeah, the short answer on uh, of what Canes fans want to know is yes. This is this is definitely to me the best defensive line hall in the country. Um, and if you're going to have a position, I say if you're going to have a position where you have the best hall in the country, there are two spots that I think that you want to be at, and that's defensive line and offensive line because it just shows up so much and can impact and affect the game each and every week. And when you bring in a hall on the defensive line like this, you can do so many different things with that group down the the road right and the, because they have a good handful of these guys and there's there's a mixture of skill sets where you have guys you know like Lightfoot and like Pickett that are really you know demons off the edge that can rush the passer but you've got a guy like Justin Scott and Armando Blunt who can also be interior guys but by the way have the quickness to be able to bounce outside and we saw Justin Scott did that down in San Antonio he played some some defensive end down there as well and held his own against tackles and so when you have that mixture of guys it can really help you um, along your defense because we all know that a good defensive line really sets the tone for what your defense is going to do and by the way Miami doesn't have slouches coming in that secondary either um, and so you end up in a situation um, where they've got top to bottom you know back to front a really good um, group coming in on that defense now in terms of the of where it stacks up historically I think that this is as good as I've seen in the time that I've been covering recruiting uh, which has been 10 plus years because it's so it's not like it's not just top heavy and it is top heavy because you have three five stars coming in um, along that defensive line um, it, it Justin Scott Armando Blunt and now uh, Marquise Lightfoot who got elevated this last go round with the final rankings but you also have other guys like we've talked about Pickett and some of the others that are also in the group that are solid prospects and then you mentioned what I think is the X factor with this group and that's these guys being coached up by Jason Taylor like that is <laughs> if you want to talk about a, a place to go to get developed and a guy that you know is going to help you get closer to your dreams in the NFL, which I'm sure was part, part of the recruiting pitch to land all these guys. Jason Taylor would be that guy. Um, and I think it's just a fantastic marriage of all of these, all of this talent and then the position coach that they're getting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I spoke with Marquise Lightfoot when he was down here for the cookout during the summer and he basically communicated that you know a big reason why he decided to be a miami hurricane is because of jason taylor right. they want to be taught by the best and to get that opportunity to be taught by a hall of famer right. i i don't think right. it's 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 an opportunity a lot of these kids can really pass up um and you know everything else that miami brings as well as far as mm -hmm. you know location nil opportunities an opportunity to really make some noise in the ACC because it's a conference that I think is up for grabs um, year for year. Clemson doesn't have a stranglehold on this conference anymore, it seems. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think I think they see the opportunity to really make noise on a national stage. But um, besides uh, that outstanding defensive line class and we're watching uh highlights of booker pickett here for for those who are wondering mm -hmm. um miami picked up 
position, uh, skill position guys as well. And one particular guy was Jordan Lyle, who also within with the 2024 final rankings ended up as a top five athlete at his position at running back. What was the conversation about Jordan Lyle, um, you know, making the top five at running back? Yeah, I think that Jordan Lyle is a guy who also, you know, had really good production um, during his time in high school. Um, a as a senior, he had 21 touchdowns and he ran for he is, it was 10.6 yards per carry, um, which is nothing to sneeze at. Right. Like you pick it up a first down every single time uh, you get the ball down in the state of Florida, you're, you're doing something right. And I think that he's also a guy that has a high upside. Right. As we look at running back was interested this year, and I think that it was kind of jumbled up and hard to kind of pick which guy was the top guy um you know Nate Frazier was a guy that that ended up I think is our number one our highest rated guy but other than that like it was kind of a mixed bag and it was kind of take your pick on which guy you like the best I did like Lyle um and I think that he'll be a nice pickup for Miami moving forward um as a guy that is a potential home run threat but can also get it done um on a down-to-down -down basis for the Canes behind what has become an emerging offensive line you got a freshman left tackle down there uh that that did pretty well this year as well so Talk about those lines of scrimmage. When you when you get that going, it makes those running backs look even better. Um, but I think that that Jordan Lyle is a really good pickup and well deserving um, of being a top five running back in this class. Was it contentious as far as like the conversation in the room of who would be like the top guy or or if he or Lyle would make the top five? Because I, I think a lot of Hurricanes fans may be disappointed that. Kevin Riley ended up flipping to Alabama. Yeah. How close yeah. was this race, though, at, at running back? Yeah, there was some there was some discussion there, like because, like I said, it was really, you know, kind of jumbled up in that next group of guys. And I think that, you know, Lyle is, again, deserving of making it in there, but it was it could have been a number of guys. So I wouldn't say that it was contentious, per se, like it wasn't like kind of a wide receiver when it comes to like, who's your favorite guy there um, outside of J.J. Smith? Like once you got past him, like the order there was really contentious. Um, but as far as running back, I don't think that it was really, you know, that hard hard fought uh but he's definitely deserving of being in there uh but yes the kevin riley deal definitely hurt yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah. uh miami um you know they they are not just uh, recruiting south florida either i mean obviously lyle and a lot of those d-line guys that we talked about are from south florida or from florida um but you know Miami is starting to really go into the Midwest. And we kind of seen that uh, within the past couple of weeks. And I know that is kind of your stopping ground over there. Uh, what are you hearing about Miami really kind of making a, a, a stamp over there in the Midwest, especially the Chicago area where they got, of course, a, you know, a Marquise Lightfoot and a Justin Scott for this 2024 class? Yeah, I think the thing that I'm hearing from both prospects and then high school coaches, seven on seven coaches, is that they are, it's a welcome addition for the U to come into the Midwest and really recruit that area hard. And part of this is, is that, I, and I, there, I mean, I know these guys would say this and it's going to sound like it's biased, but I think it's actually true is that those kids in the Midwest, I think, get overlooked a lot. Um, but what you what what ends up happening is is those kids end up populating Big Ten schools and having productive careers, especially those kids in the trenches. And so, if you want to go and get quality players that are going to be on your lines of scrimmage, and you need to inject some toughness into your program, you should come to the Midwest, and you should particularly come to Chicago, which is what I, th I think is under recruited for the high end prospects that are there. Like I think that you know your mid level Power Five schools like to come there and cherry pick because they know they can get quality guys but when you get higher like more upper echelon programs or programs that are on the rise like Miami coming in there it catches people's attention and when you think about a, a specific prospect that I've got my eye on and I know the staff was in to see was Nathaniel Marshall um, a defensive end out of Chicago I really like his game I think that he's a guy that's going to continue to rise up the rankings even though he's he's pretty highly ranked right now as a 6.04 star um, and the number 23 player in the entire country for 2025 right 
right now. I think that's a guy that Miami is going to recruit really hard and try and go back to back years with getting, you know, some highly ranked defensive linemen out of the Chicago area. Like it's like I said, it's an area that I think is under recruited by the big boys and Miami coming in there is really nice. It was interesting, too, that Miami was up here during kind of this whole Midwest, which is blanketed with snow when we were in this deep freeze for the last right. couple of weeks. And that's when Miami kind of came in to do it. That actually makes a little bit of a statement, right? We're going to still kind of make our way through all of this to get to see you guys. I think that that was noticed as well. Yeah. I mean, it was scary for me uh, being a Florida guy myself to <laughs> kind of see the snow. And, you know, I, I know Crystal Ball is a Florida guy himself, you know, yeah. but of course he's kind of used to it, I guess, uh, from his time at Oregon. Uh, but yeah, I, just to see Miami just kind of go into that area. And I agree with you. I feel like the Midwest, um, especially Chicago, is which which is a city more known for basketball, right? Uh, just to kind of go in and get get the get or try to get the top recruits again in a back to back cycle um, is really is really showing just how much Miami is putting into recruiting the effort that they're putting into recruiting the nation, not not just South Florida. What are what are the other schools that you think that will be in contention for a, a Nate Marshall, though? Yeah, I think that he's going to be one that, you know, he's got kind of the, the whole gamut. He's got close to, you know, 30 scholarship offers um, out there for him. But I think Ohio State is another one to watch. Um, they're a school that, you know, with Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach, has is always in the mix for these top recruits. And it'll probably with Ohio State be a similar situation that it continues to happen there. And I've talked to Ohio State people about this is that every year people are now negative recruiting against them about how how long is Larry Johnson actually going to be there, right? Like we saw that with the whole Justin Scott situation as well. So you guys are familiar, but that is a real talking point on the recruiting trail for them. Um, I think Notre Dame will, will try and be in the mix there for Nate Marshall too. Michigan as well, but we'll kind of see what happens as they transition away from Jim Harbaugh. But, you know, Alabama has been was in the mix, but they had a coaching change and we'll see what happens with Kalen DeBoer as well. Um, so it, it's an interesting time to really kind of make the push with Nate Marshall because – and I've said this a couple of times about different recruits, too, is right now, one of the big things that you can sell on the trail to kids is stability, right? If, if you can say, hey, we're on an upper trajectory and our coach is going to actually be here, that is – it is now – it's so weird to say it, but that has become a big <laughs> thing um, in recruiting because of how much change and turnover we've been having, especially late in cycles. Um, and that can be a kind of a card that Miami can play really in its favor. Yeah, um, you know, last question, man. It's kind of a wild card because I didn't discuss this earlier. But, yeah, the big news is Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan. I mean, uh, it's just – I think we all kind of saw this coming, though, right? I mean, because he was been kind of interviewing, and I think he's at actually the best spot that he could possibly be in the NFL uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers and, you know, starting with uh, Justin Herbert over there, who, of course, Mario Cristobal kind of helped groom. Right. Um, but now there's like, it, it, this is kind of what happens now in college football. Like other, other programs become scavengers, right? right. <laughs> You're like, okay, well, what's, what's left in your program or who, who could we possibly add to our class? When you look at that Michigan, uh, class, even the 24 who has, I, I believe a month or, or so to, uh, transfer in and out and maybe any future classes or any any players that should be on the watch as far as the Michigan roster is concerned. Yeah, well, yeah, they've got they just won the national championship. And even though they had a ton of guys leave, they still got a lot of talent in the cupboard down, up there. Right. And so it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with that. And I think the guy that I think that everyone is watching is their superstar defensive lineman, Mason Graham. We've tried this has been like the defensive line podcast, which is fine. It's important. Um, but right. he's a guy that everyone is going to be circling to see what happens. And the, the key thing for what's going on at Michigan is, is it feels like the overwhelming favorite to get that job is Sharon Moore, the offensive coordinator who stepped in for Jim Harbaugh on yeah. what Harbaugh's mini suspensions that happened this past year, um, right. which is wild to think about. He missed like half the games for suspension. Um, and so because they've he's got that rapport with the team, 
they all seem to want him, right? And so it made that the hiring him and making that quick transition may keep their roster together. And I don't think that you'll see kind of a full scale like exodus with the top players like you did at say Alabama. But the thing to watch is for them is if they continue recruiting at the level that they were under Jim Harbaugh, like here recently. Right. And we talk about some of that Midwest toughness that they've injected in, like that Miami is trying to inject into the program. Michigan took that blueprint and ran with it. And it's how they've been beating Ohio State. Right. If if some of those guys, you can start to chip away at a couple of those guys. That's what ends up really helping your program. It's like getting a couple here and there in that 25 class um, because of that transition is something to really keep an eye on. People really seem to like Sharon more, but he's not Jim Harbaugh, right? Jim Harbaugh is one of the best football coaches walking the planet, right? And so there's going to be some slippage on that. Um, And so that's something to definitely watch for the future more so than the current time. Absolutely. It'll be very interesting to kind of see where these players go. You know, a lot of players will likely exit just like we saw in Alabama. But one thing I will say uh, about the national championship, Greg, is that it I think it gave Hurricanes fans some some hope here because uh, this is a team that was kind of built in the trenches. And that's what you yeah. see with Mario Cristobal's recruiting classes. They're, they They first had an emphasis on the offensive line. Uh, in that 23 class. And now this 24 class, obviously, there's an emphasis on the D-line. And it, it's it's not like they had a ton of great skill guys. Obviously, you had, you know, the running backs with Blake Quorum um, and, and the other run, running back as well. But wow. this was a team that was built in the trenches. And it's not like they had a top five class. So I think Miami, with now a top four class, according to rivals, I think the future is really bright and that they can indeed get to the playoff, especially with the playoff extending to 12 game, 12 uh, teams here. Yeah, and the the key guy in all of this, I think one that we haven't actually mentioned yet is that Cam Ward, that quarterback, right? I think that when you you get a quarterback like that that can be a game-changing player, that can really change the trajectory of everything that's going on because if you know that you're going to put up some points, you can break in some of those young defensive linemen on the other side, right, as you kind of go along. Um, And then once you get that ball rolling, that can really help your program moving forward. Um, And so, yeah, I do think that that, I think that that's a great point that that it's should give Hurricanes fans hope um, because that I think that when you look at teams that win at a, at a high level, you know, when you look at the Georgias and Alabamas of the world, Michigan this season, like they are built up front. Like there are always skill position players, but that you're right. That Michigan team did a good job of identifying and developing their skill position versus just going out and getting the highest rated guys, which is just another way that you can do it. It's easier to do that though, with those skill position players, when you know the trenches are well taken care of and you've got a great offense. Right and defensive line because that makes everything better. So I think you're on the right track there with how Mario Cristobal is building this program because it gives you a a larger room for error everywhere else. Absolutely. That's Greg Smith, ladies and gentlemen, for Rivals.com, National Recruiting Analyst for the Midwest. Great stuff from you as always. Love having you on. And hopefully we can have you on uh, another time in the future, Greg. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. We look forward to doing it again. Absolutely. That's going to wrap it up for the Storm Tracker podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel live from Canes County and also subscribe to the website canescounty.com for free. We're running a promotion this weekend. Use the promo code Canes24. Until the next episode.